Hey, it's Mike here, and today, meal replacements. You may have heard of Soylent or Huel, and they're sort of the new wave of tech startup nutrition, and a critical mass of you have suggested I do a video on them, so here we go. So we're gonna look at what's in them, we're gonna ask, are they healthy, and at Soylent, like Soylent Green, so, are they made of people? I'm sorry, I know the Soylent people are probably super tired of hearing that joke. It's made from vegan people, that's why it's vegan. But it's what happens when you make a name, like how my name everybody thinks is Mick, even though it's Mike. Sort of my fault, I guess. But actually all of the meal replacements that we're gonna talk about in this video are vegan, which is awesome and I really appreciate. And it's probably why despite this being one of the first five video ideas I wrote down when I started my channel, I went 200 videos without even talking about it. I was so happy that they were catering to vegans that I didn't even wanna criticize them. But you know me, I'm all about whole foods, so this is this is gonna be interesting. Let's, let's do this. Let's look to Soylent first because after all, I think they're the most popular. They did crowdfund one and a half million dollars in pre-orders. And so let's take a look at the ingredients list. And on that list, it makes a very important point that quote, well, not intended to replace every meal, Soylent can replace any meal. And I think it was a major problem when they first started this. People thought they could just eat this and only this, and that is definitely not healthy. So let's actually look at the ingredients. Since I'm gonna make some critical comments, let's start with the positive. Firstly, I really appreciate how they didn't overdo the vitamins and nutrients and minerals and stuff. A lot of vitamins and stuff go way overboard with the daily value. You'll see like 10,000% and that is totally unnecessary. And in certain cases can be harmful, like in the case with iron for men, that would take probably several vitamin tablets to do that. Now my personal opinion on the biggest issue here, and that is where the energy is coming from. This is basically a meal of refined sugars and starch, refined oil and isolated protein. It's heavily refined foods and vitamins added. And yeah, maybe you're not gonna eat it every day, but there are probably people that go entire days where they just eat this. So it's just an entire day of eating processed foods. We have refined fine starch in the form of maltodextrin, which can be up to 20% simple sugar, so it's simple sugar as well. From this study, quote, since glucose from digested maltodextrins is rapidly absorbed in the small intestine, the increased use has raised questions about potential effects on metabolism and health. And they go on to mention that this may lead to harmful blood sugar spikes. They also pulled a master marketing technique of calling sugar isomaltulose. They use a particular type of sugar, which is also just glucose and fructose, and each serving has about nine grams. You extrapolate that to 2000 calories, we're looking at 36 grams, which is right up at the maximum amount of refined sugar you wanna have in a day. According to the American Heart Association, you add the sugar that might be in that maltodextrin, and that's pushing you over the maximum amount, they say, that's just not, it's not a good way to eat. Now let's get onto the oil. They used canola oil, which I do appreciate. If you have to choose an oil, I would choose that because of the omega ratio, but here's the thing. Almost 50% of the calories are coming from canola oil here, and canola oil, refined oil, has the ability to spike your blood fat, as this study mentions. But I hope that even if you wanna deny all my warnings against refined oil, you should realize that eating 50% refined oil as a meal, in terms of calories, is, is not best practice, it's not healthy. Because it's a cocktail of refined foods, it's no surprise that people have reported some digestive issues and there have been several recalls due to gastrointestinal distress. And that brings me to the issue of fiber. They added some oat fiber in there, so it should all be good, right? The advantage to plant fiber is that the food, the nutrients, all of those things, the calories are inside of the plant cell. And as it is digested and breaks down, then slowly you can absorb these nutrients in the small intestines. But without any of that, it can quickly be absorbed. And just throwing some superficial fiber on top of that isn't gonna help that much. Just because you're meeting the fiber numbers that are allegedly supposed to be healthy on paper, doesn't mean that it actually is gonna be as good as real food. For a mediocre analogy, it's as if this Christmas, UPS, the delivery service, decided to take all their gifts that they normally ship in packages, take them out of the package, and just give them to you next to the package as if it was just as good. That would not end well. Little Jimmy is gonna cry and turn to drugs as a result of you, UPS. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, refined foods plus superficial fiber will never yield the same result as whole intact plant foods. All right, moving on. Even isolating minerals and taking them out of foods can be an issue as well, especially in the case of calcium. Soylent uses calcium phosphate, which is a calcium supplement. It's an issue here because atherosclerosis is a hardening of the arteries, also a calcification of the arteries. 
Sadly, from this study, after associating for total calcium intake, those calcium supplements were associated with about a 20% increased risk in artery calcification. In other words, because uncontained calcium enters your system, enters your bloodstream, sort of spikes blood calcium, and then makes it easier for calcium to deposit into your artery wall. Okay, now let's talk about that isolated protein, all of that pea protein. By my standards, I think it's a little bit too much. Do we have the research showing that it's definitely dangerous? Absolutely not. Looking to what I talk about in my BCAA and protein powder video, if you reach a certain threshold of leucine, you might spike your IGF-1 levels, which could increase your risk for cancer. It's unclear what exactly the window is for this, but at around four grams of leucine, we can see an increase in IGF-1 in certain studies. Based off the pea protein amino acid content, my best guess here is that about 900 calories of Soylent would put you at that four grams, that potentially IGF spiking level of leucine. For somebody like me over six feet who's relatively active and needs to eat closer to 3000 calories, I could easily eat that in a meal and that would just probably be too much leucine and it's just more protein than you need. Who knows how dangerous it really is though. All right, now let's move on to Huel. Huel to me definitely just screams like, you are eating space food. To start with a positive comment, this is oat-based, which I think is awesome. However, in terms of how quickly it's absorbed, oat powder, this is powdered oats, it's probably the fastest. Then it would be like instant rolled oats, rolled oats, steel cut oats, and then finally whole oat groats would be the healthiest here. That sort of sums up the issue with meal replacement shakes is that no matter how healthy the food was initially, it's gonna be the finest powder that you end up eating at the end, which is potentially gonna create issues. It's definitely better than straight maltodextrin though. And I will say they also have flaxseed in here, which is great in terms of your omega-3s, your ALA. However, in terms of the isolated protein here, they have 50% more protein than Soylent. So all of those issues I was talking about with leucine, since it's also pea protein, and it also has brown rice protein, but it's gonna be the same issue. So a lot of what I said about Soylent applies to Huel. They have the same calcium and everything like that. However, they did go a different route with the oil. I think they went a slightly worse route, actually. One oil they chose was MCT, or medium chain triglycerides, particularly from coconut. So I think it's lauric acid, which is 100% saturated fat. We know from studies like this one that coconut oil raises LDL and saturated fat is the component of coconut oil that does that. I think they were trying to appeal to the keto crowd here because they just love their MCT oil. It's supposed to put you into ketosis faster. And I just don't think it was a good decision, especially because with all of the carbohydrates in here, no one's gonna go into ketosis anyway. Thankfully, they didn't go too overboard with it. And the total saturated fat content of Huel is pretty comparable to Soylent. All right, now let's move on to isolated antioxidants and vitamins, which can create some issues. I've probably shown this study way too much in my videos, but this is one that looked at the DNA damage of pilots because they are exposed to a lot of radiation high up in the atmosphere and found that those who ate the most antioxidants had a lot less DNA damage, but it didn't help if they had antioxidant supplements, isolated antioxidants. In fact, some antioxidant supplements can have a pro-oxidative effect from this study that took people with a lung cancer and gave them beta carotene in an isolated form because they know that beta carotene intake is associated with lower mortality. Well, the result was the opposite. The ones that took beta carotene had higher rates of cancer and higher mortality as well. Now I would just consider this a cautionary tale. It doesn't mean that all isolated antioxidants are bad. And I will say it's good that Soylent and Huel, neither of them used a beta carotene. They used a retinyl palmitate, which is a different type of vitamin A. However, there was a controversial study on mice that rubbed it on skin lesions because it's an ingredient in sunscreen and then exposed them to light. And they had a worse outcome if they had that type of vitamin A. So maybe it's oxidative and dangerous, or maybe it's just photoreactive. Maybe the study wasn't good enough, but even if it's totally fine to consume that vitamin orally, these ingredients lists are just isolated vitamin after isolated vitamin. Now there is one brand of meal replacements that didn't take this angle, and that is cachava which is also vegan, which is great. Now, a while ago, they actually reached out to me about promoting their product. And since I was doing a lot of research and getting ready to do an isolated protein video, I was like, I don't think I can do this because they have isolated pea protein in it as well. So that way I have no conflict of interest. I'm just turning down money left and right. I'm just like, oh money, no thanks. All for you guys. The point here is looking at their ingredients, they actually put real food in their meal replacements. They actually have real carrots in there, which is a legit source of beta carotene. They have a long list of actual foods on there like berries and greens. And yeah, they're totally powdered and not completely whole, but they're a whole lot better than just straight up isolated ingredients like maltodextrin. You're welcome for the free advertising, Kachava. 
But actually, I shouldn't speak too soon. I have some, some brief criticisms. I'm sorry. My main criticism here is that it's just super low calorie. On the back, it says 250 calorie meal. That is not, never. There is no such thing. Literally three square meals of 250 calories a day would be less than they ate in Auschwitz. Um, that's, that's actually a fact. And that's one thing, but perhaps the biggest issue, which I think they definitely need to fix is if you extrapolate this to 2000 calories, because they added coconut milk, the amount of saturated fat would reach 36 grams. And that's nearly three times the American Heart Association's maximum of about 13 grams per day for a 2000 calorie diet. So that is just not cool. So I was complaining about the saturated fat in Huel, but that's, that's literally three times as much. At 200 calories, they would also get up to 200 grams of protein, pea protein, which is again, just way, way, way too much. So I would suggest that they reformulate to include more calories per serving, which is a meal and less saturated fat, probably a little bit less protein, or they can just give up being a meal replacement and just consider themselves a snack or a supplement. That being said, Kachava blows it out of the park with all those real foods in there and Huel and Soylent should absolutely follow their lead. And to go one step further in terms of advice, I would say that maybe some of these products should include little packets of whole freeze-dried foods because they would last. For example, you could add freeze-dried blueberries on top of these smoothies, and that would be a whole blueberry. And from studies like this, the antioxidant content is only slightly lower. So this brings us to the final question. Should vegans be eating this? Should they be replacing meals with this? And just my opinion, in general, no, but there is a type of person that I've met that tends to get really busy and frazzled and not prepare their food, not eat a well-balanced diet, potentially skip meals, not meet nutrient needs. And this is the type of thing that would actually make them healthier because they would get more of those nutrients they're missing. So if you don't have a well-planned vegan diet like you're supposed to, then this would work. But ideally, you would just get your crap together and maybe batch cook some well-rounded meals instead. That would be the ideal situation. This is simply my opinion. It's your choice, but I think that's logical. In the end, it's sad that our bodies have not adapted to eating processed foods. We're not gonna do well if we just slam down isolated protein and refined oil and refined starches and sugars. It's just not gonna do well. Maybe after we're eating Huel in space for 500 years, then our digestive system might change. If we can even change, can't even change that fast. I understand the intellectual satisfaction of taking all these micronutrients and stuff and putting them together and so on paper, it looks perfect. But the reality is no, it's never gonna be as healthy as eating whole real foods. Finally, real foods taste better. For example, a writer from The Verge had only Soylent for a month, and at the end they said, quote, Soylent isn't living, it's merely surviving. Something tells me that Kachava tastes better, but by now I think I've said everything I need to say, so let me know down in the comments if you've tried any of these or what you think about all of this. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.